Good morning again. All right. Uh, the title of this panel, I believe, is the user and the developer perspective. Um, yesterday, I already mentioned a little bit what we are doing. Uh, but in case there are some new people, uh, pod trains, just as a brief summary, are mass transit systems. They are not pod taxis. They are not tourist attractions or tourist rides. They, but they are trains of driverless electric vehicles uh, that travel on a dedicated pathway network, and they offer on-demand service or demand-driven service. So the next uh, slide is actually a video that gives the user experience. The audio is in Spanish, so I will, and it's subtitled in English. Estamos aquí en el Centro de Investigación y Estudios Avanzados del Politécnico en Guadalajara, Jalisco, donde Modutram tiene una instalación de demostración y pruebas del autotren. Le vamos a dar un tour por esta instalación para que viva la experiencia del usuario. Llegando a la estación, vamos a ver que nos ubicamos aquí en la ciudad de Puebla, Tenemos aquí el mapa de la, del sistema integrado de transporte público rápido. Nosotros estamos aquí en la estación terminal 4 Poniente y nos vamos a ir en autotren a la estación Mercado de Sabores, donde haremos un trasbordo a la ruta 2. En la estación, el primer paso es la compra o recarga de una tarjeta de prepago. En nuestro caso, Insertamos una tarjeta que ya tenemos, el saldo actual es de 60 pesos, así es que no necesitamos recargar. El segundo paso, y esto es algo nuevo en el sistema Autotren, insertamos nuestra tarjeta e indicamos nuestro destino antes de abordar. Esto porque el sistema entonces agrupa pasajeros que tienen destinos comunes para que todos viajen en un mismo vehículo y el, así el vehículo no necesite hacer paradas intermedias Ya fue llamado el destino Mercado de Sabores. Vamos a pasar por el torniquete donde se realiza el cobro. Y vamos a subir al andén para abordar el tren. a la estación de 17 Norte y el siguiente, que es el nuestro, se dirige a Mercado de Sabores. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Estamos aquí ya en el tren. Cada tren del sistema autotren tiene una capacidad para 12 pasajeros. Tiene dos vagones, cada uno para seis pasajeros. Como usted verá ahorita, estamos saliendo de la estación y nos vamos a incorporar al carril principal. Sobre el carril principal, los trenes viajan a separaciones muy cortas, de hasta 6 segundos, con lo cual se logra una capacidad masiva en el sistema. La velocidad a la que estamos viajando aquí es de más o menos 20 km por hora, pero en una instalación comercial la velocidad sería de 54 km por hora entre estaciones. Una velocidad muy El sistema autotren es un sistema de movilidad ágil y sustentable. Esta semana 
Modotram abrió una sucursal en Puebla para desarrollar software para el sistema Autotren y ahí estamos desarrollando el software de la sala de mando. Entonces, el sistema Autotren es para Puebla y también de Puebla para el mundo. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. Si tiene alguna pregunta o comentario, adelante. Okay, so that was the user perspective. Uh, the developer's perspective um, took a lot longer. <laughs> we started in 2009 when we founded this company, Modutram. Um, we started working on a scale model first, um, and then in 2011, Actually, we started a bit earlier, but by 2011, we had a consortium of companies and universities and research centers already established that were willing to work on this project. And some of them uh, worked on the project as long as we paid them to do so, and others actually invested out of their pockets. And those are the ones who are still with us. Um, uh, in 2013, we actually ended up having our first customer, um, this was an Autotren version for the tourist industry, and this was a very small demo facility. That facility is no longer operating, unfortunately. But basically, it allowed us to get one step further, and that was to actually start our first round of venture capital. With that money, by 2017, we were still working on our test track, but focused now on the mass transit application, no longer on the tourist application. And that allowed us to actually start getting or asking independent assessors to come and evaluate our system. I'll talk about that in just a second. And in 2018, beginning of this year, we hit a major milestone, which was the approval from the Pro-Tram program in Mexico. I'll tell you a little bit about that in just a second. Also an independent safety assessment by an, a very recognized company uh, based out of Germany, TUV Rheinland. Um, and we also reached the 50,000 kilometer mark on our test track. So about these independent assessments, uh, the first one was to measure our compliance against the ASCE 21 standard, which is the Automated People Mover Standard, Chapter 7, the vehicles, and Chapter 8, the propulsion and braking system. That was done by Jake's Associates, a company that is based in the U.S., and that has also evaluated other people mover projects like the ones shown in the pictures there. And basically, uh, they did find some items, and we also knew that, where we were not in compliance with ASC 21. But largely, we are in compliance with ASC 21, and there are items, of, obviously, that we have continued to work on to achieve greater compliance with ASC 21. The other important uh, independent assessment was done by an organization called CTS Embark, and that text is in Spanish. But I will translate that. Basically, their technical opinion, they are now part of the World Resources Institute based in Washington, D.C. They said they came and did a pretty thorough assessment also of our system, and their conclusions were, were that GRT is innovative, fast, attractive, flexible, clean. It is therefore a high-quality option for urban transit, and there is no reason why GRT projects should not be allowed to participate in the Mexican federal government's pro-tram program. Now, what is that? That basically allows commercial autotren projects in Mexico to be eligible for federal funding. So the federal government can put up to 50% of the total cost of the project. And that is, of course, a major milestone for us. But not just for us really for the whole podcar industry. Because finally, with that assessment, GRT, at least in Mexico, was officially put on the transit planners map. Transit planners have this diagram that shows commercial speed versus capacity. It's one of the standard diagrams. And GRT was never on that map for transit planners in Mexico to actually consider it as an option. And now it's on there. Now, obviously, when you need this type of capacity, that's the Mexico City subway, you don't need GRT, you need a subway, right? But in GRT systems, uh, a lot of corridors 
are perfectly adequate for GRT systems. You just have to be very careful how you manage the throughput at the stations. Line capacity, a lot of the consultants will pretty quickly catch on that it, that is doable. It's the, the, what happens at the stations that really worries a lot of them. And so that's why it's important well, we had to do a lot of explaining and educating to these people as to how these stations are really going to work. And when you have an intermodal station, for example, coming in from an intercity train or something like that, you really need a station with a lot of modules in parallel to be able to handle peak capacities. My summary, there are many corridors where a capacity of 10,000 passengers per hour per direction is adequate and where GRT can be an excellent solution. Safety, of course, is fundamental. Our control system is being certified to European railway standards. It's a lot of work, a lot more than we ever imagined. But GRT technology will continue to evolve and mature. And I'll talk to you about what I see happening next in the next panel. Thank you very much.